Well, it's not just museums which are enabling the public to celebrate their fascination with the Tudor period. Over the last few years, a space of books, films, TV programmes have all drawn huge audiences. So is it just the mix of lost palace politics and violence, or is it telling us anything about ourselves? With me now, the historian Dr Susanna Lipscomb from the New College of the Humanities. Uh, why do we like this so much? Is it, is it just that that's what school focuses on, or is there more to it? And I'm sure that's part of it. I think that we're indoctrinated at a young age. We're seven or eight, and it's stories of daring do and, you know, knights and princesses and all of that. The Tudors fulfills that sort of role. So I think that then, you know, people are fascinated by it later in life. But I think it's also that it was just a very important time. Of course, it, it's the sort of foundations of everything from the beginning of parliamentary democracy, the Church of England, the Navy, the empire a lot of the things that we associate with Britishness began in the Tudor period and of course it's, as you alluded it's all about the lust and the soap yeah. opera well, lots of dramatic things going on and lots of things that children can get into at a very young age and they do they do in in in, in most English schools certainly um, you know for anyone over the age of 25 this is all sort of Blue Peter, children's television, school. It's, it's in there right from the beginning. And it's such, a, it's such an engaging story for them. It's the sort of tabloid king, the much-married Henry VIII, through to the virgin queen, you know, the unmarried Elizabeth I. And it's these great characters. It's, it's people that we, for the first time, feel that we can empathise with in history. And I think that's partly because you can actually see the Tudors. I mean, the National Portrait Gallery's first portrait is from 1505. It's, you know, we're, we're a visual age, and so I think we like to see their faces. But does it give us a very um, limited view of that period, just focusing on the kings and queens? I think that may be the case. I mean, I think the story at the top is so extraordinary that sometimes it means that we haven't looked at the lives of ordinary people, you know, you and me, in the past. So it actually wouldn't be that story at all. Um, but, I mean, historians uh, dig that up. And, and one of the things that school children look at these days is, you know, what was life like for rich people or poor people in Tudor times. So there is a sense of drawing attention to that. It's almost where we stop, isn't it, when we, when we look back? Why do you think that is? We well, don't tend to go much further back than the Tudors. I mean, Richard III has had his, his moment in the, in the sun, hasn't he? So he's sort of shifted our attention a bit further back. I really do think it's, it's to do with pictures. It, you know, only post-Renaissance can you see people. And I think that's really important in our age for empathising with people. And I think it's, it's much more difficult for people to access the stories of the Plantagenets. I know many of my colleagues will, will disagree with me, but I don't think there's such a sense of it being um, something that we identify with in the same way. Do we know all we need to know now, or is there still things to discover? Well, I, obviously, I don't think so. I mean, I think there's always more to discover. I mean, I know that some people feel that they've, they've had enough of the Tudors, but I think, actually, there's so much... Uh, there's so many layers, there's so much depth that we can discover. You know, as a historian, I hope that one day we'll find, I don't know, the trial documents of Anne Boleyn or something. We'll know something that we didn't know before. Um, and I think that the more you know about something, the more intriguing it is to go further in and get deeper. Thank you very much indeed for coming in.